What will we do? Wanting you more each day. Show us your perfect way. There is no way that we can live. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's mine and my privilege to introduce to someone presented on us. The speaker of the afternoon and he'll be letting us out of here except the whole ghost pull us beyond two o'clock. And we have a word in the house. Here and your soldier live. It's my honor to present Associate Pastor Courtney Lawrence. Receive. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Give the Lord a hand clap to Jesus. Tell him something sweet. He's worthy of all praise. From the rising of the sun to the going on of the same, his name is to be praised. The other day I was stumbling, just rolling my mind about my mom and some of the songs that she likes. And um, stay right in the key, right if it's like Brother Kevin. I've been so blessed and privileged to have the entire Pentecostal experience endowed in me, both from word and from music standpoint. Um, very rare you're going to pull a hymn that I probably don't know. And, or a song that I don't know. And this one jumped out at me, and um, it's, it's going to be so left field from what you know, but it just, it just really sets my heart, you know. And, you know, Brother Kevin, just stay right there, and you'll get the melody. Amen. Who is he in yonder storm at whose feet the shepherds fall? Tis the Lord, a oh, wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet, we humble fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. It's just simple. Tis the Lord. Oh, wondrous story, tis the Lord, the King of glory, at his feet we humble fall, crown him, crown him, Lord of all, who is he in deep distress? Fasting in the wilderness, tis the Lord, yes, oh wondrous story, tis the Lord, the King of glory, at his feet we humble fall, crown him, crown him, Lord. Of all. Who is he to whom they bring all the sick and the sorrowing? Who is he? Tis the Lord, O oh, wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory, at his feet. We humble fall, crown him, crown him, Lord. Now somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this day, a day which you have never seen before. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Oh, you are the king of glory. You are the King of glory. We're not even worthy, but yet still you allow us, Lord God, 
And today we just want to crown you Lord of all. As we stand to share your word, Father God, I pray, dear Father God, that your word would come forth with power in life. That someone's heart might be changed. Father God, let your word have its way. That we will see you more clearly. We will love you more dearly. We will follow you more nearly, day by day. Bless your word, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap one more time. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I sing to the Lord a wondrous story. Yeah, you like that one, huh? Yeah, tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humble fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord. Come on. Yeah, I, you know me. I like all that. All of that. I like all of that. Yeah. But I know where I'm coming from. Hallelujah. I got good roots. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today my aim and my desire is to crown him, Lord of all. Sister Cheryl, God bless you. You don't know that one, huh? Hallelujah. That one is before your time. Amen. I praise the Lord and I honor my pastor, my bishop, Mr. Fortner, co-pastor, Evangelist Porter Fortner, to the men's president, the overseer, the quorum of ministers, Bishop Higgins and Lady Higgins, all you wonderful saints, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I acknowledge and give a shout out to my wife. She's watching. I hope you're watching. I love you, baby. You are the best thing. Amen. Hallelujah. She's feeling much better. I report victory. Come on. I report victory. I report victory. Yeah. On the second day after she came home after the hospital, I tell you, I know how Nadine feels better. When she starts fussing about the place, she's better. She's healed. She's delivered. And she's set free. And then when the fussing about the place goes to fussing with me about what I didn't do, and all my time is taking care of you, sleeping every night in the hospital, you know, with you. And then you come home, and things are not done. You're first. I know she is healed. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Hey, I know she is healed. So I truly thank God for delivering her. Brethren, let me tell you something. We've been teaching from the book of Job. And I know it's the Lord that led me in that book. I know. I thought I just wanted to encourage somebody. Amen. It was fine before. The body was fine before. Amen. Um, I know. I just. I thought I just wanted to encourage the body of Christ, but not knowing that my day was going to come. You know, at the second trip to the hospital, I felt so helpless. I, I, I had taken contracts for the next morning, next couple of hours. I had insurance checks and money and all that stuff with me. Couldn't go at 3 a.m. I'm sitting on my steps watching my daughter drive my take my wife to the hospital. And couldn't go because I know it's going to be in the emergency room and I would have to leave her. And just couldn't go. Just felt so lost, Bishop. Felt so lost. Couldn't even pray. And, you know, I, I, I thank God for prayer warriors. I thank God for prayer warriors. I pick up the phone and I call. I call the other McClymont and I say, Brother McClymont, I just need you to pray right now. Emergency prayer. I call Sister Jessica and I call a couple others and those people who are praying. Don't, don't watch, don't pray. You got. To. I always say, I say it all the time in my Bible class when I teach. I have no problem with no preachers coming and praying, but I 100% believe in the prayers of my brothers and my sisters. I really want. I'm not calling X from down the lane. I'm believing God that you. And you, who can be touched with the feelings of my infirmity, that you will touch heaven on my behalf. Amen. And we're talking about living in the spirit. When you're living in the spirit, and a call comes in, 
that somebody needs a breakthrough, you can tap in to heaven and touch heaven on their behalf. Hallelujah to God and send up a word because you're connected and you're living in the spirit. And, 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 and I sat there and I just, I, I, I broke and I cried and I like, like God, you know, I mean, I have no problem crying, but, you know, it really just got to me. You know, I, I, I just, for a long time I haven't felt that scared, you know. And I sat there and at 5 a.m., I, by the to 5, I pick up the phone and I called her and I got on the phone and I said, because I, I, I want to make sure she has the fight in her bishop. And I said to her, I pick up the phone and, I, and I'm, not, I'm being very serious. I said, Nadine, you need to listen to me and listen to me carefully. If you have one thought about dying, I will come up to the hospital right now and kill you. Hallelujah to God. Amen. I told her, if you have one thought about dying, I will come to the hospital and kill you myself. And I'm very serious. Well, after that, there's a whole bunch of tears. That's down here. You think God for the vida, she she's trying to be daddy in so many ways. You know, she got the words thing going on, you know, and she called me and she's trying, she's giving me the, oh, dad, it's going to be all right. You know, you know, she's in God's hands and, and she's sounding like me in my ears. And, and, and I'm like, I thank God. I love you, baby, that you stood so strong with mommy and to my sisters, Evangelist Lawrence and Tanisa, Jesus, she's a nurse. She is a nurse. I mean, Tanisa is just just doing everything. I really want to get that out there. Amen. I thank God for all of you. Amen. Let's get to the word real quick. I really thank God for everyone's prayers. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Get to the word quick. I, I'm challenged this morning because, one, it's the, it's, it's the book of Romans. And if you know anything about me, it's my favorite book in the whole wide world. It's one of the books that you can read um, chronologically in any direction. Where you go, you can start from the one to chapter sixteen and go from sixteen back to one. And anywhere in the book of Romans you pick up, or you start from, you can go either direction and still get the same message that Paul is talking about. Amen. So I'm so challenged to to, to, to preach this word. I told my friends and I said this morning I was like, I can't preach this word. It's the book of Romans like that. You can't preach. You have to teach. You have to share information. I thank God for Bishop that started this morning. I was back there saying preach because he didn't even know who was the preacher. I'm going to say you would preach. Amen. Hallelujah to God. But I'm going to just give you a couple nuggets. Um, just just a couple of information. It's not, it's not, the topic is so broad that it's not, when you're writing songs, you, you look for a hook. When you, what, is, what is a hook in a song? It's the catch line. I mean, it's the catch line. Every praise is to our God. Everybody, once you sing, every praise, you, you'll remember, the, you'll know that part, that part. The topic doesn't have a hook so to speak, where you can, where you can just take a little piece and work it. It's not, he's bringing you out. And you can, you can jump to chapter eight, verse 18 and, and, and says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. And you preach, you teach from that angle. It's living in the spirit. So it, 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 it's the enti- almost the entire chapter, the one before and the one before and the one before. And if you go back to chapter 6, then you're going to end up in justification. So it is, it's, it, it's, it is so broad. So I would just like to real quick, i got about 20 minutes more left, um, to just share a few things with you. Living in the Spirit. And, and, and please, I'm just not going to, I'm just going to talk to you. Don't expect a, a ray, ray, ha. No, no, no. I would, not, I would not embarrass the Word of God like that with a topic like this. Amen. I must talk to you so you hear and we walk away knowing that we can live in the Spirit. Amen? Oftentimes we're challenged with living in the Spirit because, first of all, there are misconceptions of what we think living in the Spirit is. If I have a subtopic, I will tell you, it's a fight. It's a fight. Just tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's a fight. It's a fight. It's, It's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight to live in the Spirit. It's a fight to live in the Spirit. So, um, let me start off by telling you what living in the Spirit is not. The misconceptions that we have about what it means to live in the Spirit. To live in the Spirit, it is not to walk around speaking in tongues all day, every day. 
that is not living in the spirit. Living in the spirit. Uh, uh, we are a, a tongue talking church. We, we believe that you must manifest the Holy Spirit by the evidence of speaking in tongues. The, the word Holy Spirit is mentioned 19 times in this chapter, 19 times. Yet still, it doesn't refer to speaking in tongues when it talks about the Holy Spirit as in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in, in, in the form of giving a word or giving praise to God. It, it, it is number two, uh, it is not to live in the sanctuary or to be in the actual building 24-7 to say that you are living in the spirit or to be at every church service even though we should be. Amen. That's not what causes you or makes you or qualifies you that you are living in the spirit. Number three, the third misconception that is out there, it, it, it is not to live in hiding or segregation from the outside world to say that you are living in the spirit because being that the word says coming out from among them and be separate it doesn't mean that you cut yourself off from people or from the world to say well I'm living in the spirit so I can't associate myself with others amen so that's another misconception number four Amen. It is not, and God bless you, my wonderful sisters and saints of the old. It is not for you to walk around and have a rigid face, a rigid facial expression when you come to church that you are so grim and and and, 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 bitch, bitch, and, and say like as if you baptize in lemon juice and and then why you look so well, holy me holy. Hallelujah to God. No, that is not what, what qualifies you from living in the Spirit. Number five and final one is not having or being in a state of being spirited. Ah, you are spirited so that you think that you are spiritual. What do I mean? People who are spirited are people who at every drum beat they are always running around and being so hot to Mashanda over here and a hallelujah over there. And they are as mean as a rattlesnake. Those are the ones you can't talk to. Those are the ones you can't correct. Those are the ones who don't participate in anything. Those are the ones who don't line up with nothing in the church. They don't contribute nothing to the church. But yet still, they are the most spirited people you can ever find. Oftentimes, I tell people, like, watch those spirited folks. Spirited folks are always hiding something. Some of the people who shout the biggest hallelujahs are the biggest hell raisers there ever you can ever come across. They shout the biggest hallelujah. Your hallelujah can't touch them. When you see them in church, they are so spirited, they make you feel like you need to go back in the baptism and pool and get baptized all over again. You need to go repent. You need to, you, you're, you're not saved when they come around because they are so spirited. I tell you, this thing is too wide. This, uh, I, mean, I mean, it is a really tough lesson to teach. But I want to tell you, that's not what it means to walk into spirit or to live in the spirit. Simply, it is to subject yourself to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is to go through the whole regeneration process and the sanctification process knowing that you are justified. What I say this. It is going through the whole regeneration process and sanctification process. Knowing. Knowing. You got to know this. You got to know that you are justified and that you are declared righteous. 
If you never know that you're justified and God declares you righteous, you will walk around feeling condemned every single day of your life. And that you can't live in the spirit. Because, guess what? Because though we live in this, there is a fight that is going on. And when you look at the cha of chapter 8 and how Paul starts off his writing, he was writing, and chapter 8 begins because if you read chapter 7 and the conclusion of chapter 7, he leaves you kind of hanging. He leaves you wondering, how are you going to make it in this battle that he talks about that so many of us can identify with? He talks about, in fact, if you back up, after he talks about justification in chapter 5, and he, he start off chapter 6 with a, almost like a rhetorical statement by asking a rhetorical question, telling you, what shall you say then? Shall you continue in sin that grace may abound? After that, you can truly say, God forbid, only when you know that you're justified. When you know that you're declared righteous, then you don't have to no longer live in sin. You don't have to be held bound to the chains of sin because you know Christ has declared you righteous. And then he went on to talk about a bunch of things. And then at the last verse of chapter, 20, of chapter 6 and verse 23, he says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I'm like, Brother Paul, you, you, you're really, you getting to me because it seems like I'm in trouble when it comes down to your writings. And, and I'm, one minute you're telling me I'm justified. One minute you're telling me that, man, the, 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 uh, look, if you step out of line, the, your wages is going to be death. And then he starts off in chapter 7 and he starts talking, talking about how he, he was alive at one time in his life. And he didn't even know wrong from right until the law came. And when the law came, he said the law came in him and made his sin so much more exceedingly sinful. And, 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 and what that means really, I mean, how many of you have driven on the highway, have a driver's license? Let me see my hand. You have a driver's license. You have a driver's license, and you drive on the highway. Most highways are either 55 or 65 miles an hour. None of us obeys that. We all go 70, and in some people's case who have cars like Porsches, they go above and beyond. God bless you. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. So how many of us, have, at least I'll say we, we're very cool, and we're, we're very law-abiding. So we only go to 70 miles an hour. There's nothing wrong. You drive 70 miles an hour. But what would make 70 miles an hour seems outrageous if you see a car on Jefferson Street going 70 miles an hour. It's not the, not the 70 miles an hour that makes it look so wrong and exceedingly fast. It is the law of the 25 miles an hour. You, 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 you catch me now. It's the law of the 25 miles an hour speed zone that makes 70 look so fast. So Paul is now saying, I, I, I didn't know how wrong wrong was until the law came in me. Uh, what makes that you shouldn't steal so wrong is because of the law that says it, what you shouldn't do. So he went on to talk about that, and he, and he went on to acknowledge himself. And he, in the latter verse of chapter 7, he started talking about how much he reckoned that, that, to, to, that in me dwelleth no good thing. And, and, and how he said, to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, he finds not. Bless the name of Jesus. He went on to talk about how every time he tried to do good, how evil will present itself. And he analyzed his struggles and the fight that was within him, the war that was in, in his mind, the war between good and, and evil, the war that when you want to live in the Spirit, how hard it is for you to live in the Spirit. Because the intent of the law, let me backtrack a little bit, the intent of the law wasn't just to, to condemn you. The, Paul talks about that when you're living in the Spirit, you will now bring out the righteousness of the law and the intent of the law. Bless the name of Jesus. The law is there for us, even though it was weak and it couldn't save us. It is still there. It's a school match. It's a guideline for us to keep us in line to tell us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. 
Amen. Hallelujah to God. So in, in living in the Spirit, let me run on, I've got a few more minutes. In, in, in when you're living in the Spirit, Paul at one point in time, in, in chapter 7, when he analyzed himself and, and, and he looked at how difficult this thing seems to be and how challenging it is because he knew he was justified. He knew that, however, he shouldn't continue in sin because of grace. He knew that he didn't have to live that way. However, he recognized this carnal nature that is inside of him and another spirit. He said that, I want to live in the spirit. But then he went on to say something. He says in verse 21 of chapter 7, because he wants to live in sin. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with itself with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So he said, truly, Bishop, inside of me, I really want to live a life where I'm walking and I'm living in the Spirit. However, after everything that I've written about and talk about and which the Lord has revealed to me, that I've received imputed righteousness, that I don't have to stray, I don't have to walk around feeling condemned, yet still I recognize that there is a fight. And the next verse he says, but I see, I'm in chapter 7, I'm in chapter 7, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Stop right there. That is it. That is where the fight is. I said, tell, it's a, it's a, say it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. It really is a fight. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you with that scripture right there. And, 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 and let's be honest. If you have never stopped to look at that one, it really is going to get you. He says, I wish they would put it on the monitor so we all will see it better. For those who don't have a Bible. But I see another law. The other law, this wasn't the thou shall not or the intent of the law to keep you living holy and righteous. He found another spirit. When he talks about the law, he found another spirit. Hallelujah to God. He found another spirit in my members. It's not even in your mind now. It doesn't manifest itself in your mind. It manifests itself in your members. It manifests itself in your tongue, what you speak or what you say in your hands, what you do in your sexual organs. How to, come on, y'all don't want to be good. Y'all don't want to talk truth now. In your entire body, in your physical anatomy, every area of your body where nerve endings are and sensation and things that connect it to your five senses, that is where he find another spirit residing, living, take up residency in full-blown operation, sitting there in control of your members. Is the strong man become the ruler and the, and the territorial possessor of your entire body? Fighting, he said, Paul says, warring against the law of my mind. You, you know the truth. You know we know. We know the truth. Look at the times when you slip and you mess up. Look at the fight before the mess up. Look at how the devil work you over. And, 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 and you really wish sometimes you have a way out. Or you wish some, something could have happened to stop you. Yet still, this spirit has risen up inside of you. Warring against 
the law of your mind. Your spirit, your spirit man is saying, no, 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 no. I still spell danger. I really spell danger. Hallelujah to God. Every argument, every fight, verbal confrontation I have ever gotten into my life, there was always a voice telling me, shut up. Don't say nothing. 